Here we are the next day and um, this bridge is now on securely. There's my coffee in the background. <laughs> Um, so the bridge is on securely now. It's time to finish it off. So what we've done is we've just taped over the bridge and I've taped over the front of the fretboard here and the nut. Um, we've left the rest and what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll put a finish on it. Today I'm actually just going to put an acrylic top coat clear over the top of it. Um, being a Sapirli body, it does go really well just with an oil finish, um, but we're going to use this one that's a little bit different. Now the reason I've... Um, Put the tape on the front here is I'll actually oil this fretboard. So I'll oil the fretboard and I'll oil the, um, the bridge. But um, in the meantime we're just going to spray it with the acrylic top coat. Back, all sanded, all ready to go. And you'll see when we apply the coat how it actually brings up the grain. This has actually got some interesting grain happening on this side through here. So a bit of a flame sort of area. Um, we'll see how that comes in. It should blend in a little bit more once we actually get the, um, the acrylic on it. All right, so we'll give it a coat of acrylic and um, then I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, we are back and uh, as you can see, everything is unmasked. And this little ukulele has had a coat of clear. So, uh, as we said before, we had marks off the fretboard and the bridge. And then we just went over it with a few coats of clear, just thin coats to start with. Um, you'll find Sapirli is an open grain timber, so quite a bit of it will soak in. You can grain fill it if you want. Um, I didn't bother with this, I wanted it a fairly natural sort of look, a bit of an open grain look. And you can see how it brings up the colour of the actual Sapirli. It's um, quite a pretty timber. Now, um, with the fretboard, there's a few things that you can do. You could spray it if you want to, although with walnut and um, any dark fretboards, we tend not to spray them. You would spray it if it was, say, a maple fretboard. Um, you can put an oil finish on it. There's all sorts of different oil finishes that you can get on the market. If you don't have any oil and you don't want to go out and buy any, um, what you can do is you can just use a little bit of wax or you can use a little bit of boot polish if you have that. Um, now remembering if you go to a dark colour in a boot polish it'll actually darken your timber. If there's any luthiers watching they're going to cringe when I say use boot polish. They'll say no, 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 don't do that. Um, it's basically wax. Okay, So it's wax and has some waterproofing in it. So all you do is you just rub a little bit on paper towel onto the fretboard. Um, leave it for a couple of minutes and then buff it. Now you need to buff it off really well. If you don't, you're going to end up with black or brown fingers. Um, you can actually see it's increased the colour on the fretboard. Um, quite nice actually, and it's very, very smooth. And the same has been put onto the bridge here as well. Now the bridge is extremely smooth, um, darken the colours up quite nicely. So if you don't want to go out and buy um, oils and things, then you can actually use just some boot polish or some wax if you've got some wax at home. I wouldn't suggest that you go and put boot polish or anything on an $8,000 Gibson. Um, that's not what I mean, but if you're just putting a little kit together, if you want to save some money, you can do that. All right, the next thing we need to do is to put our hardware on. And the first thing we're going to do is put on the tuners. So when you have a look at the actual tuner, you'll find that there are four tuners and some of them are opposite to each other. So cog is there, it's on a different side. Now when you're putting them on, these obviously go onto the back and then this part is the front. But this section here, this cog has to face downwards. If it's facing upwards, then you don't get the right tension on your strings. So if we just flip the ukulele over, I'll show you what I mean. So when we put this in, we put it facing down that direction. We don't have it facing up. If it's facing up, it's incorrect. So it's facing down. So this one would go on the opposite side. Again, it's facing down. Same with this one. Facing down and facing down. Okay, now they're just going to flop around in there. The reason being is we haven't got the ferrules in the front. So the first thing we need to do is pop the ferrules in the front and basically we just put those in here. You can just tap them home with a little bit of a, a 
a soft hammer or if you don't have a soft hammer sometimes they'll just push straight in um, you can just put some masking tape on the front face of your hammer so that's going in this top one's going to need a little bit of a hand to get in so we'll just grab that hammer and when you're doing that make sure you brace the back so don't hammer it like that you'll end up breaking your neck have it flat and if it's flat done and on this side you get this one in there you go make sure they're in so it'll now look like this if you're using the other kit which is the um, basswood kit these will be plastic just go easy if you're hammering, hammering them in and they'll be a cream color the same color as the tops of these so now we flip it over and we put these back in you find they'll be a little bit firmer now and there's no hard or fast rules with this but you want to get them straight okay you don't want them all crooked you just want to get nice and straight okay I like to get them straight just with the side of the um, of the neck or the headstock I should say so they will be on a slight angle if that makes sense because the headstock is coming out so as long as they're parallel with the side of that headstock they'll look fine okay now once you're happy with the position um, you can mark them if you wish with a pencil um, and then you need to pre-drill the holes. Um, I'm dr pre-drilling my holes with about a 1.2, sorry, a 1.5 mil drill bit. And you want to actually put a little bit of tape on your drill bit so you don't drill all the way through your headstock. So what we'll do is we'll grab some tape, like so. And we grab one of the screws and we just measure on the front here how long that actual screw is and then we put a piece of tape the same depth as the screw so that means that we won't be going any deeper it's like a guide we won't be going any deeper than what that screw is you don't want to drill through the headstock okay so just one at a time carefully make sure you've got it in the right position and straight down the side and uh, I like to spin on one at a time small screwdriver if you find it's a little bit hard going in you can put a little bit of wax or a little bit of soap candle wax will do a little bit of soap on the end of the screw will help it go in we'll screw that home same on the other one Now this video pretty much is in real time apart from the sanding and the finishing as far as the, the lacquer is concerned everything else is pretty much in real time so this gives you an idea how long it takes to put these kids together it's not very long really do the next one again we'll hold it in position and drill that one in pop this one in Anyone's wondering on the actual screwdrivers that I'm using, these are little King Chrome screwdrivers. Uh, not sponsored, by the way. <laughs> and they're not very expensive, but they're actually really good quality. So if you're doing a lot of work with small screws, well worth getting yourself a set. Sometimes it's easy just to do these one by one. straighten up to where you want it nearly there two to go then basically after we get this on we will need to string it up and after that we get to play it Now 
If you've never played a ukulele before, a uh, great little instrument, very easy to play. Uh, one of the reasons for that is that there's only four strings, unlike a guitar which has six. Uh, but also, the the way it's they're actually tuned. Um, to, to give you an idea, to do a C chord, it's one finger, and an F chord. Let's do this the right way. So a C chord is one finger, and an F chord is two fingers. Most people can learn a few chords in the first couple of days and have it play a song. So not many instruments you can do that. Okay. So that one's in. So that's what they look like at the back now. And then from the front, they look like that. Oh, there you go, from the front and from the back. Okay. I do have a little logo that I put on mine. If you want one of these, you can get in contact with me and I can send one out to you. Basically, it just sits on the front anywhere you like. I'll put that on later on. Okay. The next thing we need to do is to string up the ukulele. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing this. I'll show you how I do it. Now, ukuleles are a little bit different, whereas they have, especially on this type of model, this is a soprano, they'll have a, a high pitched string, then a lower, slightly higher, then a high pitched again. And that's really what gives you that ukulele sound. When you strum it, your first string that you actually hit is a high pitched string, then it goes lower and then higher and higher again. So, let me get these undone. Bear with me a sec. Okay, so once you've got your strings organized, you'll find that there's basically three different thicknesses. You've got two very fine strings, and then you've got a thicker string and a very thick string. Okay, so the two fine strings are your two outside strings. So we'll put one of the finer strings on first. And I usually like to go from the outside in. So let's see if we can get in here so you can see what we're doing. What you do is you insert the string all the way through and you leave about, oh, let's say that much. Okay, if this is going everywhere, you can actually just get a little bit of tape and hold it down. Up to you. Just hold it out of the way. Don't do that. Okay. So we come over, so we're just coming over the top, and then we're going underneath. So it's sort of like tying a knot. there and then we're going over the top of this one so we go under and then over like so and then we bring it down here and then we pull it so we'll go over this again for you so if you have a look at that there we have all these little loops if you like going through once you have that there some tension on it. Now there's a couple of ways again you can do it at this end. You can either just pop it around and thread it around and then through the hole or you can go through the hole first. Up to you which way you'd like to go. Some people go through the hole and tie a little knot in it. There's a few different ways you can do it. The main thing that you need to do is that when you're winding this on the strings have to come from the inside, not the outside. So when I wind this on, you'll see what I mean. If you wind it the other direction, the strings will be on the wrong side of the post. So you want the strings on the insides of the posts. I just like to put them through twice on the thin strings, like so. And then hold it up with a little bit of tension. And then we wind. Now if you've got a string winder, you can certainly use a string winder. If not, just use your hand. So I wind that on. Now see how it's going on to the inside of the post there? I'll show you a close up soon. Now 
once it's nearly under tension. I'm pushing this down because I want these wraps to go down, not up. So down the post. So if it just keeps a little bit of tension on there, push the string windings down. Okay. And don't forget to put the bridge in. The saddle, I should say. Okay. Now while we're doing that, we can actually have a look. I've just put the saddle in there. And we can have a look at what we call that action. So in other words, this is how far the saddle, uh, sorry, how far the string is from the fretboard. Now, most ukuleles will have about two and a half to three mil from the 12th fret to underneath the string. So if we measure that now, so we measure from the 12th fret to underneath, we have one, two, three and a half, nearly four mil. So I think I'm actually going to take a little bit off this bridge, or off the saddle, I should say, just to get the string down. So if we take some material off the back of this, as you can see there, it'll actually push that string further down. And I want about two and a half to three mil on there. So before we go any further, and this is not under great tension, pull that out. And we're just going to sand the back edge. We don't want to sand the front edge where it's curved. We want to sand this flat back edge. And we'll take a small amount off just to see how we go. So I'm going to take off about half a mil. There's a couple of ways you can do it. You can grab yourself a vise and a file. Grab your file. Move that out of the way and file it away. It's plastic, so it's going to file quite easily. Just to go through, just make sure it's, it's straight. Um, or you can stick a little piece of um, piece of sandpaper to your bench and file it by rubbing it backwards and forwards. Okay, I'm just going to do it with this file to start with, and then I'll probably go over it with a piece of sandpaper. So. I'm not using, normally I'd use a little vise, but you can do it just in your hand. So let's just take this off first. And then we'll go the other side. So you get it flat. You can also hold it on your file and backwards and forwards like so if you want. That'll make it flat. Just don't file your fingertips away. Or your fingernails. Let's see how we're going. We're nearly there, taking a little bit more off this middle part, so we'll come back and we'll just do that edge. I'll show you how to do it with an actual piece of sandpaper. So you can grab some sandpaper. Usually a heavier grip is a bit easier. Just bear with me a second. In the shop here I've only got 400. You can go a little bit heavier if you wanted to. So we pop that down and you can tape it if you want to. You can tape it onto your bench. Bit of tape. Doesn't really matter how you do it. Tape either side. Something on a nice flat bench. Kitchen table if your wife lets you. <laughs> and just go backwards and forwards like so. And that will 
get it flat for you, okay? I would go a bit heavier, 400 doesn't really cut very well. A bit trickier. And then once you get it to the thickness that you want, then we can pop it back in the ukulele and see how that height's going. Okay. And it's taken it down to where we want it. Let's get rid of that. And our ukulele. Go down that first. You don't want to scratch our new ukulele. that down. Just going to slide this in and we'll check what our height looks like again. Oops. Let's see how we've gone. We are now at 3 mil. So that's fine. We can live with 3 mil. Okay. Once we put the thin string on, the next one we have is the thickest string. And we'll grab our thickest string, and exactly the same thing. We'll pop it through, pop it through the hole, leaving around about that much at the end. Again, I'm just going to pop a little bit of tape to hold it down that end for us. Make it a bit easier. Sometimes they won't spring back, depends on how tightly they've been wound down. Okay, now the same thing again, we come, <laughs> take two. I'm really just taping this out the way so you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, so we're straight down, we've got uh, probably a good four inches on the end there. We come underneath, we go over the top, and now we wrap around this top one. So we go underneath, over the top, and under, and then over, under, and over. Okay, so we've got the loop there. Now, see this little part we got here? If we pull this the other direction and we'll stick it inside that loop, That'll hold it all nice and firm for us. Okay, here we go. Pull it nice and tight. So, let's see how we've gone there. So this one goes underneath. You don't have to, it just makes it a little bit neater. And then come back with a pair of clippers and just clip off. Clip off that piece there. Just so it ends everything up. Then when we get to the other end, we'll take it back through the other direction. Okay, so we'll take this off. Now, if you're getting a little bit confused with this, there are lots of online tutorials about how to do this as well. So I suggest looking up one of those if you have any problems. Um, I've also seen people tying knots at the end and then threading it through, so really up to you. Now this one, again, we'll pop it through. About there, take it around, pull it through again, so it's nice and tight, have some pressure. Now you can see how I actually hold it. I hold a couple of fingers underneath the string and then that one down there, okay, and then wind it on. And that just gives us those nice downward spirals on the um, post. Okay. There we go. That's on. Okay. Then we get our next thickest string. So our thinnest, our next one, our fattest, and then our next thickest goes next. So again, 
and go through that hole there. Again, leaving about the same amount at the end there. Once you string these up a couple of times, you'll get the idea of how to do it. Okay. Under, over, under, and then over this, over this side. Once, you can do it twice if you want. Hold it and then pull the string through. Again, catching this piece from the previous string underneath, pull it nice and tight. And then we go to the other peg on the other side. Okay, so this one here will go up to the top. So this string onto this one, our next string onto here, third string down up to the top and then the highest string onto this one. Again, we're going from the inside. So it winds from the inside, not the outside. We'll pop that through, leave a little bit of slack, pull it back through the hole, pull it tight. Again, same thing here. And sometimes you get a little bit confused which way you're winding this, but you want to wind it so the string's on the inside here, not on the outside. To me, it feels backwards, but it's not. <laughs> so we wind this one on. And after we do that, we've just got one more to put on. I might fast forward with me winding these on. I don't need to see me doing this. Okay, last string. Oh, might as well trim this one's base off, seeing as though it's underneath there. We'll trim it off next. So we've got sharper cutters. This one, again, pop it through. Give it a tape, hold it at the right. And this is the same way that you would string up a um, classical guitar with nylon strings as well. Okay, so again, we're leaving some off the edge there. <clears throat> this time we're going under, over, and through this direction, so wrap it around. Okay, make sure we capture that little piece there. Now, we've got this daggy piece. What I want to try and do is pop it underneath the one before it, so it goes back on itself, if that makes sense. Let's see if I can show you. So we've got this piece here, I'm going to put it underneath that one. It just makes it a bit tidier, that's all. Pull it through and try and pull it down so it's behind the bridge. Okay. There you go. That's when we get in the right position. Might want to just take off a little bit of tension on the string next to it. on that string and you're going to wind that string on and again winding it on the inside of that post so towards the middle of the headstock all right once that's done i'll come back and i'll show you what we do next now we have our four strings on what we can do now is we can cut the ends of these strings off 
I usually just leave a couple of mil and give them a trim back. You can do this later if you want. You can tune it up first if you wish. It's up to you. This is just how I do it. Okay. So we're now looking nice and neat. And we're all looking nice and neat down here as well. It sounds terrible, we're not in tune. Um, I'm actually using a little tuner that has ukulele on it as well. Um, if you don't have one of the little tuner, you can use your phone. You can download an app. It has a tuning app on it and uh, use that to tune it with. Now, with a ukulele, you'll find that the strings will stretch over the first few weeks, really. Um, we can help that basically by grabbing the strings and just stretching them up, okay? Give them a little bit of a pull, a bit of tension in there. They will actually stretch a fair bit. Here we go. What's going on? Especially those thin ones, they stretch quite a lot. This will just help keep it in tune a little bit. So what you're doing when you're stretching, you're doing two things. First of all, you're stretching the string. You're also tightening up this area here and you're tightening it up at the um, at the tuner by, by pulling it, by putting a bit of tension on it. You can see how far this is coming up here. Okay, so once, it's very loose now. So once we've got that done, we'll come through and we'll start to tune it. Now, ukuleles, modern tuning for ukulele is the first, well, actually it's the fourth string, but we'll call it the first string. So the top string here, one closest to you, if you're a right-hander, this one. This is tuned to a G. There are different tunings for ukuleles, but this is the modern tuning since it's about the mid 50s. Sometimes it takes a fair while to get up there because the string will start to stretch. See on my tuner here. Let's go back. Let's see if I can show you. G. Now you just keep turning it until it goes green. now in tune. It'll go back out of tune, but don't worry about it. The next one we do is C. So we'll just cut this and tune it. That's C. This next one. one we tune to A so we go G C E A. I'm going to pick it up to do this because I'm going to have to do a fair bit on it, do it the other direction. Okay now it's tuned up. By now it would have all gone back out of tune again. It takes a couple of times to actually tune the ukulele up so you go back to your first string and retune it. You might have to do this two or three times initially I'll go ahead and do that and I'll come back when it's in tune. And we'll have so what we've done now is we've just tuned this up. While we've been gone, I'll just put the uh, logo on the top there, the Rebel Guitars logo plate. Um, this goes on the same as what the tuners do. Just drill two small pilot holes and you can screw it down, making sure you don't drill through the headstock. So um, let's come back through here and make sure this is in tune. So it's our G. Oops. C to G, C. Still a little bit out there. That's 
Ready? E. Okay. So that's how we tune. G, C, E, A. So you can hear when you hit the ukulele strings with your finger, you hit the high one first. You hit that classic ukulele sound. C chord, one finger on this first string here on the third fret, one finger down, C chord. Is that the way for you? Back to the C chord. Simple as that. Um, take a little bit of practice, but um, once you get the hang of it, you'll have a great little instrument. That's what it looks like. Great little instrument for the price. Uh, great fun to put together. And it's not just a toy, it's a real instrument. And uh, this is a soprano. You might want to try making a bigger one later on. You might want to try making a kid's guitar if you want. So, great little one to start with. Um, I'll show you the other uh, kit that we have. Now, you can, you can do what you like with these. So, this just has a clear finish. You could stain the top if you want to. Um, you can dress it up by putting stickers on the front. There's, there's lots of th different things you can actually do to make it your own. I'll show you this one here. I'll just move this one out of the way. So this was one of the basswood kits. Um, I put this one together a little while ago. What I did with this one is I actually bound the top and the bottom. Um, quite a bit more work involved with it, but it gives you an idea of what you can do. So that's that one bound. The neck has been painted black and it's been um, distressed on the edges. Same as on the front here, a little bit of distressing on the front. And again, the fretboard has been painted black as well. And it's been lacquered over the top. Okay, so totally different look. But two ukuleles, both kits, and you can make them to what you want. All right, I'm gonna take some photos outside of this one. So stay tuned if you like. You can see some photos outside and more. We'll Give you an idea of uh, how good this timber looks. See you soon. Seeing eyes of mine, what do you feel beside? I don't know where we're going. You do sometimes seeing eyes.